Hi, Gordon the Gamekeeper here again. We have seen in previous conservation fact files how game and conservation managers and some farmers create wonderful wildlife friendly habitat on the ground they are managing. Yet all over the country we see populations of flora and fauna tumbling at an alarming rate. So we need to look at what else we in this country can do to supplement the good work they are doing. So let's talk gardens. About 87% of households in the UK have gardens. That's about 23 million gardens, ranging in size from the very small at only 3.6 square metres to the very large at over 2,200 square metres. The total estimated garden area of 4,330 square kilometres is about a fifth the size of Wales or over four times the area of all the national nature reserves. If we could just harness some of that acreage and develop it for wildlife, what a bonus that would be. In fact, if we could also add some of the available area currently found in school grounds, that would be a fantastic addition. This could turn into a massive subject and we could run on for hours. However, we're going to keep it short and start small with some suggestions to create suitable areas, large or small, to help our struggling wildlife. And we need to start with the basics the food chain. I'm sure you have all heard of food chains and in order to create a suitable environment for birds and mammals the food chain looks like this. The sun providing energy for plant life to grow and the right choice of plant life will attract insects as primary consumers. Given a healthy variety and supply of insects this will attract mammals and birds as secondary consumers. So let's get started. And we'll start with the easy one, flowers. We can plant flowers that will attract insects in anything from a window box to a large formal garden. For this purpose, try to plant flowers that have an open petal formation like a daisy, which allows pollinators easy access to the center of the flower to be able to retrieve the food. A planted area like this will also be an ideal breeding ground for other kinds of insects, which in turn will attract birds and other larger species to your garden. Even if you only have a window box, this still applies. Seek out the wildlife friendly plants, most of which are marked as such in garden centres. Taking the idea of flowers one step further, how about using even a small piece of ground to create a wildflower type meadow? It is well worth the effort. All kinds of insects will love to visit and you will have the joy of seeing butterflies, bees, hoverflies, ladybirds and much more take advantage of the habitat you have created. In the evenings you may be lucky and see bats hunting in the garden. What about lawns? If possible, leave an area of lawn unmown every year, or keep your mower on a high setting to allow dormant wildflowers such as daisies, cowslip, dandelion, buttercup and clover, and even maybe some of the less common varieties to flourish. All good for insects and thus other wildlife. Trees and shrubs in your garden will recreate an area similar to that loved by wildlife, i.e. woodland edges and field hedges. They will provide good nesting cover for birds such as blue tit, blackbird, hedge sparrow, and many insects such as ladybirds, ants, beetles, and other creepy crawlies. Once you have wildlife visiting your garden or area, it is time to provide other opportunities for them. Here's a bunch of other ideas for you to try. Leave an area of your garden uncut if possible. Let the nettles and brambles grow. These are the food of butterfly larvae, such as the Red Admiral. A brash pile, which can be just hedge cuttings, cut branches. In fact, any woody stem plants used to construct a pile can provide a hibernation pile for hedgehogs and lizards, etc. If you take extra care and cover this pile with grass cuttings, wildflower hay, and then cover with a sheet of black plastic to create heat from decomposition in the pile, you will have created an ideal opportunity for grass snakes to lay their eggs, and the heat in the pile will help the eggs hatch. A log pile constructed in rough pyramid shape from our native trees can be the home for beetles and wood lice, which feed on the wood, and also centipedes, spiders, worms, etc will all enjoy this damp habitat. Insect hotels are available in many stores and garden centres or make one yourself. 
They provide hours of fascinating fun watching any bees or lacewings using them. Nesting boxes can provide safe, secure nesting opportunities for many different types of bird and can be homemade or purchased from almost anywhere. Bird feeders can be a mixed blessing. They provide food certainly for birds, especially in the lean period of the year up to around May. But they can also attract unwanted visitors such as the brown rat or the grey squirrel, which is an unwanted alien species in this country and can eat songbird eggs and chicks. Now, a wildlife pond can be a huge asset to a garden. Size-wise, anything from an old sunken kitchen sink or even a bucket to a grander, more extensive affair. All types will attract wildlife, but do make sure there is a way of escape for frogs or newts, etc., by leaving a log or something similar as a ramp, enabling them to climb out. To get the very best of any such pond, it may not be advisable to introduce any fish, they would tend to gobble up any eggs of species like dragonfly or water boatman and such. If a pond is not practical, maybe a bog garden is, and it's just as effective and attractive for wildlife. So we have seen that there is a massive potential in the garden spaces around us, from the window box to the largest of gardens. For more information, there are numerous websites to be found through Google. And for those who like to read books, Jim and Joel Ashton, the Butterfly Brothers, published a beautiful book called Wild Your Garden, which helps you to assess, plan and plant your dream wildlife-friendly garden. If everyone can do their bit to help, and many already are, there is a huge opportunity to make our world a greener, safer place for our hard-pressed wildlife and ultimately ourselves. So until next time, goodbye for now.